Good morning and welcome back. It's now 8-12 on this Sunday morning for just the third time in American history. A U.S. president is on trial in the Senate. Opening arguments will start on Tuesday. Joining me now with more on what we can expect from this trial is News for Jack's political analyst in Jacksonville University's Director of Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Thank you so much for Ooh. coming in on this Sunday morning. You know, you and I have had several conversations, several dialogues on this exact topic. It's been a long time coming, it but has. we are here. We've already gone through the proceedings in the House. We're now approaching the hearings in the Senate. What do you think will come of this starting Tuesday? Well, first of all, get ready for the opening statements from the House managers on Tuesday. There'll be a response from the defense. We don't know exactly how long this will take, really. Probably two weeks, some project, but it could go much longer. Clinton went five weeks. But let me say this. In the end, pretty much we know what the outcome's going to be. We know what the verdict is going to be. You're not going to get 20 Republican senators to vote to convict. So the verdict we expect to be an acquittal for the president. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is what will the impact of the verdict be on November for the midterms in the presidential election. And we don't really know how this trial could potentially affect November. And by that I mean the arguments that are made on both sides, whether or not we're going to see witnesses, whether we'll see John Bolton, whether we'll see Hunter Biden. So a lot of that is, is, is yet to be determined. Outcome we do know, political consequences don't quite know. Since we started this conversation, do you think any Republicans have flipped when it comes to the president? There are a few who, when it comes, at the end of the opening statements, mm -hmm. first you're going to have the House managers, then you're going to have the, the defense team for the White House. There'll be two motions. One will be a motion to dismiss, claiming that even if it's all true, this isn't impeachable. But there'll be a motion for witnesses. And there it's going to take a few Republicans to come over for to actually call those witnesses. And yes, the answer to that is there are a few Republicans that are leaning towards live witnesses, whether we, you know, whether they're needed or not. With Bill Clinton, there were three. None of them were live. And so we're going to have to wait and see. As far as the verdict goes, not so clear that any Republican has changed on the verdict. It does appear some Republicans may be affected by the witnesses. Yesterday was a big day, a lot of developments coming out. It was the first time that we directly heard from the White House. It was. They filed a six-page response to the Democrats, sort of three lines of defense for the White House, the White House lawyers. Number one, that this proceeding is attempting to overturn an election. Number two, that the articles of impeachment don't allege a crime and there's nothing impeachable there. And number three, that the president did nothing wrong. His legal team made up of seven people. Some have been very strong lawyers for him in the past. Others very well versed in constitutional law and dealing with the public. I think you're going to see great presentations on both sides. But yesterday was one of the first times we've heard directly from the White House and their defense counsel. As we all know, President Trump has been very vocal, very active on Twitter. Do you think that he will remain that way through the coming weeks? Only if he changes dramatically, and I don't expect that. <laughs> um, I think one thing we have come to expect is President Trump is who President Trump is. He is active on Twitter. He is hard to predict, except that you can predict this. He will likely be active on Twitter. He has a lot to say. He always does. Who you will not hear from, by the way, is the senators. Very interesting, this proceeding. Very, they're, they're gonna be, they won't have their cell phones. They will be they will not be speaking. At the end of the process, at the end of opening statements, they can write out questions and have those questions answered. All of this will culminate in the ultimate verdict by those senators. Do expect to hear from the president. Do not expect to hear from the senators during the trial. That's very interesting. Is this process at all similar to that of the process that took place in the House, or are there differences among the two? There are quite a few differences, actually. In the House, you heard live testimony, right. 12 to 17 witnesses. You also heard them making a decision as to whether to go forward to with what is, in effect, an indictment, the analogy right. on the prosecution side. Here, it's very different. The 100 senators technically aren't really jurors. They're actually judge and juror. Each of them will have a vote. And at the end of listening to the arguments, at the end of hearing the evidence, they will render their verdict. Rick Mulaney, always a pleasure to have you on with your perspective. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. We're going to toss things back over to Jen.